Okay, but really though, we have to talk Pokemon Center. Since Gen 2 sitting cuties, your site has banned me for trying to give you thousands of dollars. And like, I know what's up. I know why it happens. Pokemon's the biggest franchise in the world and these plushies are limited. Everything on Pokemon Center is limited. So of course, resellers and scalpers want to buy them in bulk and hike up the price at conventions and eBay for profit. A lot of the bigger scalpers will use bots to automatically fill up carts with new items and order them. And you put in a system to stop that from happening. The system just doesn't work. It bans me each gen after placing a few orders. Now I could just order all of these plushies at once, but your site is poorly optimized and if my cart has more than like 20 items in it, it just won't load the option to input a payment method. So when you release like 160 new things at once and I want all of them, I'll have to place multiple orders. But then after like three orders, oh, that's suspicious. Banned. And like back when Gen 3 was new, I did figure some things out. It starts suspecting I'm a bot when I click too fast because it starts loading a little captcha to prove I'm a human for every single page I open. And then it still bans me after a while. So you know what I had to do for the Gen 2 and 3 sitting cuties? I only got like half of them and I had to buy the rest from scalpers and resellers. So good job, Pokemon Center. Your anti-scalping system works. And yes, of course, I talked to customer service. Hey, can I please be unbanned, I'm not a robot. No, sorry, you'll be allowed back on in a few days, though. Uh, okay, um, but most of them will be sold out by then. Sorry, there's nothing I can do. Okay, well, can you give me some advice to not be banned in the future? I cannot tell you how to bypass our security beyond just clicking slower. Just click slower. Like, yeah, I get it, because bots can click perfectly and instantly, but clearly there's a lot of false positives. And like, I eventually learned that if you wait approximately 10 seconds between each click of the mouse, then it won't suspect you're a bot and ask for a captcha when loading every single page, but it will still ban you after like three orders. And he can for Gen 4, I only got 20 or so of the Pokemon myself. The rest I had to actually import from Japan because that was still somehow cheaper than ordering from American scalpers. And actually, th that was ordering from Japanese scalpers. So it was still cheaper. So this time around, after being banned, I had a friend who lives in town try to order some for me and all was well until he tried to place the order and put in my shipping address, at which point he got banned too. So, what I wound up doing was having various friends from around town and around the continent order them for me, have them shipped to their own addresses, and then they reship them to me. Quite literally like a proxy shipping company, like Zen Market, today's sponsor. More on them soon. And that was still cheaper than buying like half of them through scalpers. But I got them. And of course, when whining about all this on Twitter, I got numerous replies from other people having the same issue. They are just clicking too fast, trying to order their favorites before they sell out, and then get banned. I don't know, I guess this is just a call out on Pokemon Center to do better, because you are better. You're Pokemon. You make more money from merchandise than any other franchise in the world, and yet your main, official merchandise selling website is really just terrible. And obviously, it isn't stopping scalpers and resellers, because up until this generation, I had to use them to get the rest. So, they are getting them either way. Um. So yeah, that's my rant. Now it's time to review all of the Gen 5 sitting cuties. Yes, every single one. I put them in a light box, watched them spin around, just to be able to tell you who's good, who's bad, and who physically hurts to hold. Are they cute? Do they truly sit? Well, let's go in mostly Pokedex order and find out. Victini! Always odd that Victini is before the starters, but Victini succeeds at both sitting and being a little cutie. I love the added detail of the peace sign fingers. It looks nice because they bent the felt of the hands instead of just adding a separate piece for the thumb. Uh, though I do wish this stayed up higher. Snivy's head seems a little small, actually. It's strange, but I love the feet. And by wiggling it back and forth, it's like a woodpecker. Ah! See, it's shaped like an S for Servine. That's Servine, it's gotta be. It's not as woodpeckery, but I'm glad it manages to sit. Now, Superior is quite superior. It's in its main curl pose, which I suppose is truly how a snake would sit. Though I would have rather they stitched the hands together so that its posing is proper 
and not like it's Naruto running. Uh, they always manage to get the starters dang near perfect, don't they? This is so, so cute. And I guess this is technically sitting, even if it looks a bit silly, but at least Tepig looks friendly and like it wants to ask you if you have any games on your phone. Pig Knight's such a chonker. And pretty well done. Looks very serious. And I appreciate these decorations being embroidered on instead of printed. This is foreshadowing. Embor has a lot of details and has quite the thwomp body. It's tall and wide, but not very thick is what I mean by that. And its felt fire is sharp and bad to touch, like real fire. So bonus points for being painful as it should be. Oshawott leans, which is kind of a sit, but at least it fits well in my heart. By the way, sitting cuties are called Pokemon Fit in Japan, which is why that is a joke that works. Oh, and I want to bop its little nose and grab it and twirl its face off. Do what, do what, do what, do what, do what? Its little robe is too stiff, it's kind of mid and a riff of the original Mon. Okay, this joke is now done. Samurott manages to sit really well and feels right at home next to the other starters. By which I mean it has a lot of greebling. And it's not fun to pet, and I wish the horn was rounder instead of just felt, but alas. The swords aren't removable, but I'm glad they didn't stitch them down here. It's a good detail. And now is a good time to mention that this time around, the sitting cuties come in two different prices. The usual $11.99, but also $14.99 for some of them now. It definitely seems to be based on how detailed there are, and like, yeah, Gen 5 is when Pokemon started getting really detailed. So, fair. More details equals more work to make them. After all, I just thought I'd mention this. They're more expensive now. Pat Rat! Uh, those are some eyes. <laughs> Uh, never in my life did I think I would be excited about Pat Rat, but those cheeks are just so punchable and the tail is so stiff and smokable. I don't even smoke. Watch Hog's stubby arms are a big letdown for me. And like, honestly, they seem to have put almost no effort into this Mons plush. It's just tubes on tubes. There's no greebling. It's boring. It's uncomfortable and overly stiff. Now, how'd they go and make Lil Pup's face felt so soft when so many other Mon have felt so sharp? Like it's cuffed felt here. Ow, see, that's pain. Ooh, Lil Pup says as it receives pain from its own fur. Oh, Herdier is extremely cute and is exceedingly good at sits, like all good dogs should. Heard ya? Yeah, with those ears, I hope it heard ya. It has no mouth underneath its Scotty stash, which is a bit sad. Now, Stoutland is a good dog that sits too, but it's painful to have sit on you. Don't hold this. It will try to sell you diabetes products. Maybe even lance your finger for you. Purloin. Something is off about this one. The face, the body proportions, the neck connecting to the head off-centered, the feet? For free? The arms and body are surprisingly extra stuffed too for some reason. I don't know. Not good vibes here. But Lipard is a very cute kitty. Good vibes, sits well. I love how superbly they did the crook tail and the whiskers don't hurt like a normal cat's. Now, before we get into those, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Zen Market. Look at this box! It's so cute! And the best part? I'm not supposed to have it! Japan has over 10,000 online shops that only ship to Japanese addresses, and that includes the Japanese Pokémon Center website, which is terrible because they sell so many more great pieces of Pokémon merchandise there that just aren't available on the North American Pokémon Center. Like, I want Mincino Mop slippers, or an actual light-up chandelure, but alas, we are out of luck. If not for Zen Market. With Zen Market, you essentially get a Japanese address. Them. You purchase these goods through their website. They are then shipped to their warehouse, and they then ship them from the warehouse to you. It's that simple. You can even just copy and paste an item's URL to the Zen Market search bar, and there it is. So you can have all of the Japan-only plushies you want, or anything else for that matter. After all, you can even use them to shop through Japan's Amazon or Yahoo auctions. It's great. And there is a delicious link for you at the top of the description, where you can make a new account for free and get a gift of 300 yen. I hope you order something you've always wanted, like I have. And now let's move back on to the three wise monkeys. Pan Sage looks like you took a perfectly good monkey and gave it anxiety. It knows what I'm going to do to it because out of all the plushies so far, this one is just the best to hold! With violence. Simi Sage is normally my favorite of the monkeys, but this one is actively trying to saw my fingers off, which always means negative points. It's just so sharp, and the hair is less pompadour and more brain expansion, but as long as you only look at it from the front and don't touch it, it's pretty great. Panpour is... huh. Well, because of how they stitched the black line over the eyes, it makes it appear more like its eyes are just closed and it has white eyeshadow instead of it being blind. And also, did you notice that, like with the previous two, the yellow is like extra yellow? Like it's so much more saturated than it should be, I feel. And Simipore is 
Uh, at least the hair is fun, because you can part the individual dreads? Hair spouts? Yeah. Yellow's still too saturated. My wife says this pansier looks like me, and I've never been more insulted, especially because I can't get this to sit still at all. This one leg is actively fighting against me, and I may have a restless leg, but sitting is one of my favorite things to do. Ah, see, here, Simi Sear's lower half is finally the proper colors. See? Told you, this is what the whole thing, this is what all the yellow should be. More, a little more creamy. But nah, the upper half is still oversaturated. Its face is pretty cute, but its neck feels sticky to the touch, and I don't like it. And mine's right arm is significantly more stuffed than the left arm from jacking it so much. By which I mean jacking up motorcycles to repair them, because its tail is exhaust. <laughs> These jokes are exhausting. Mona is just so shaped. Wow. Floral. And I'll get in trouble if I point that out. Musharna. Oh, I like that the floppy do is so unattached, like a proper umbilical cord. And also, it sits surprisingly okay. Well, stand sits, I guess. Pit of? Pite of? Why does its beak so swarm? <laughs> Why is it so much lighter and unstuffed compared to every previous sitting cutie? I know pigeons are empty-headed, but gosh. This looks and feels like a knockoff, like I'm actually mad about this one. Tranquil's got your classic two left feet. Like both legs are attached to the left side of the thigh, it's like they made one set of legs for all of the legs of these guys. Male unpheasant looks just so full of itself, like it thinks it's better than you even though it's an unpheasant. Its mask is kinda sharp, but its tail is very empty. At least it's fun to like swoop around. But female unpheasant? Oh, the tail got worse. It's all folded in on itself and just... Not good. And because of the way its legs be, it has to sit on the edge of things instead of on a flat surface like it's supposed to. Blitzel! It's cute. It's a silly dork horse. Dork horse comics. Ha! I like that its front hooves are on top of the back hooves. It's like an eager little child with hands on the knees. Zeb Striker's pretty cool. And among the stiffest of the cuties. Like there's almost no give or squish to it. Very muscular, I suppose. Roggin Rolla and Rolla 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 because it rolls non-stop because it is significantly rounder than it should be. But I am glad to finally have a belly button to pick that doesn't smell like cheese. Bulldor. Okay, why are these guys so blue? Were they always this rich of a navy color? Either way, it sits as good as a rock with three legs could. Mine's lopsided, though, with a twisted arm. Gigalith doesn't really sit, but it is really fun. And it's pretty cool as long as you ignore the Muppet face. I just want to keep playing with this. This Woobat reminds me of a dog with no eyes until you brush it. And it's just about the softest thing imaginable. What fluffy fabric is this? I need more of it in my life. And Swoobat is also just as soft. And I think it works much better as a plush than it does as a Pokemon. This would feel right at home alongside some Sesame Street plushies in a child's bedroom. And not in a monster catching game. Drillbur! Uh... Oh no, I forgot Drillbur. Um, uh, we'll get back to that. Excadrill. I like that you can raise its drill helmet piece and it looks like a dork. Also, they gave it like three extra finger drill bits on each hand, which means that each hand is now a full cone, which is not how Excadrill works. It's supposed to combine each hand with its helmet to then make its entire body one full drill. How could they get this wrong? This isn't like a misplaced limb or a slightly off color. This is full on. Fundamentally, this plush is designed wrong. F tier. Followed immediately by an A tier Audino. Yep, that's a plush. Hard to mess up Audino. Almost like it was made to be merchandise. A Pokemon Company. Timber? More like Timber, because even though it sits, it leans. Its back must be sore from dealing with logs all day. Speaking of, I like its loose log. Girder! <laughs> okay. This one, this one's worse. Looks like it has a bad case of radioactive-itis. The arms look much more like tubes of fat and inner tube floaties here than ever before, and the veins! Why though? And Conkledur's veins are really gross and are agonizing to touch. It looks like a head crab on its back, but at least if you hold it with both hands by the concrete, you can pretend it's a dousing rod for ugly. Temple! Look at its little face! And the tail is so fun, it's like a little tongue. <laughs> Simple is great. Palpitoad. Okay, but why does it look like a weird avocado kidney bean from the side? Also, the stitching on the face makes it look like it's got a nose. But Palpitoad doesn't have a nose. But at least the bumpies are fun to rub. Minus the huge pimple alien egg forehead one. Seismitoad looks very happy. Very pleased with itself, despite the seismic stroke it clearly had during whatever awful accident led to this lumpiness. It nearly croaked. Throw. Haha, <laughs> you sure can throw him far. Yeet. But like, it is still just throw. Nothing special, other than how disdained it is. 
Sock is a perfect Pokemon, so it is no surprise to see that as a sitting cutie, its looks continue to be impeccable. Why I would even call it handsome. I think I can speak for everyone when I say, I want this in my home. See, Waddle's leaf looks positively cozy, and the details, look at the leaf hole. That's quality right there. It may not really be sitting, but it sure can fit just about anywhere you can squeeze its body. Did you know that Swadloon has nipples? It's covering them up underneath the leaf. Oh wait, are those supposed to be hands? Leaf Vanny is so cute, but the arm is a little wonk and it's hard to get it to sit upright, but I guess mantises don't really sit. I like that they tried to make them less curvy, but the legs feel like I could rip them off by glancing at it too hard. Eh, but at least the leaves are really soft. Venipede, oh, what a friend-shaped kid sitting on its chest. Look at that face on, so angry, like a little kitten who wants more milk but keeps getting pushed away by its siblings. Whirlipede is firm, sturdy, substantial, unyielding, at least around to the outside. You can squish its eyes in and reach the bean field center, just like real life. Hot Wheels, beat that! Okay, forget what I said about Zebstrika. This Scolipede is the densest and stiffest sitting cutie yet. Like you could beat someone with this. It is just so hard and rigid. Unfortunately, it leans forward like a lot, but honestly, I think that just means there's plenty of room up here to put another sitting cutie on top of it, going for a ride, because people ride around on Scolipede like horses. Cottony sits surprisingly well for a cotton ball. I wonder if Will Ferrell would eat it. J Josh, I don't get this joke. I like how Whimsicott's hair is so big it's just floating there, menacingly. But you would not believe how fluffy this one feels. It's like it was made with cotton. Oh God, no, the horror. It's a plush made out of the real animal. Petalil sits so well because it's beads, like me. I got the beads and I, uh, I really don't have anything else to say about this one. Lilligant, so many details and felt and greveling in such a tiny space, but I think that works thanks to how simple its lower half is. It's like that art thing where good character design is like there's a simple half and a detailed half. You know, absolutely pristine work on this flower, especially. Ah, basculin, or both sculins. Yeah, those are fish, with fish lips, lopsided fish lips. Not really the big jaw that they're supposed to have, but both do have good coloration, and I enjoy the stripes feel, but the tag placement. Who was like, yeah, fish tag goes backwards on tail? Also, fun fact, when I was ordering these from the website, they were labeled the opposite. Glad to see that's fixed now. Imagine ordering the superior red striped basculin and getting a plebeian blue striped one. Sand Isle gets a mill million points for cuteness, but it doesn't really sit. This is more of an interested lean forward. It's a bit head heavy. Krakarak looks drunk, very, very bloppy and droopy, exhausted after a long day of sitting because it sits so well. And its muzzle is just kind of crooked, whereas Crocodile's is just down. Sad face. This is probably my favorite Gen 5 Pokemon, and the plush is just second rate. The hands are kind of a mess too, but there's gotta be some good in it. Uh, well if you look at just the tip of the muzzle, it looks like a happy little worm. Hello! Darumaka is too good for this world, too pure. We're five generations in, and this is now THE cutest sitting cutie. Like if there is a tier above S tier, well we'll call it super S tier, then this Darumaka is there. Except actually it's above that. This is 100%, and Darmanitan is honestly really good too. Love that big mouth, the pose, the face, the vinyl or latex red tips on the flaming eyebrows. Love how that makes the light bounce off of them. The only thing that could improve it would be getting the eyebrows to actually stay up. But Darmanitan's Zen mode is even better. I could put this in just any possible room and it would just vibe. Any knickknack shelf, any plush collection, any library, any fish tank. Well, next to it anyway. This is just so aesthetic and universal Universal is all I'm trying to say. Maractus here gives me Lilo and Stitch doll vibes. What was its name? But it does seem flatter and less round than it should be. But despite that, it still manages to stand upright. What the heck, Panseer? This thing beats you? And the spikes are fun to touch too. Dwebble. There is absolutely nothing you can do to make this plush better. This is among the best plushes the Pokemon Company has ever made, especially when displayed someplace with its legs all a-dangling. The only critique you could give is that some Sometimes the eye stalks are a tad twisted. Now, Crustle. I mean, comparing yourself to your more youthful best years is the thief of happiness. Look at his face. 
I'd be like that too if I wasn't Dwebble anymore either. But it is still insanely cute. And its back is so soft and squishy, it's so fun to hold like a cake or a burger bun. Scraggy! It's got the pants. I could not imagine a more beautiful thing. Slash S. Unfortunately, you can't take them off. And I feel like it's too tall, like they stretched him to fit the details of the pants. And then on Scrafty, the pants are more poofy, but now the hood is somehow terrible. Like, it's much too small to fit over its head, even if it could. And while properly loose-fitting, I do wish the pants weren't stitched so heavily to the body and hands. You know, I didn't think I'd ever see a sigilif sit. And you won't hear either. It looks easy to bend the tail and have it sit down, but no. Either way, its coloration and patterning is very spot on. Wings and tail are sharp though, and unfortunately the feather tip stickers are already peeling off on mine. Yeah, mask. Yeah, that's, that's not sitting. That's what you're doing. Still really cute though. You can look at it from the side and it looks like a completely different Pokemon. Have a bad cold? Is your cough egregious? Then call 1-800-ARE-YOU-SLAPPING and we'll stick this creepy thing on ya. Honestly, really nice detailing all around. They somehow got its back to stay stiff and flat and straight. Tortuga. I, I mean, it's a turtle. Uh, it's firm. It's cute. It's not sitting. Caracosta. A cab, but also they got the shell right because it's hard and not fun to touch. Like, listen. Archon looks so cartoony and muppety. Its eyes are so huge. I love how well they captured the crackedness of the beak muzzle, like the little fossil it's supposed to be. And its blue flappy hands go in two different directions to reference how a lot of fossils are broken and that absolutely wasn't a manufacturing error. Archeops or Archeops, I just love how wide and flumpty it is. Slay Queen! It looks like it's got a big boa, which is ironic because snakes don't have feathers, unless it's this one. Trubbish! Oh no, it's so cute! How did they make trash good? Like, what? Please, Pokemon Company. Whatever magic you used to make trash look this good and cute, please apply that to the inevitable Gen 7 remakes. And Garboder. Unironically, for all of the hate this Pokemon gets, this is also an insanely cute sitting cutie. Ironically, a non-Garbo garbage mod. Just look at its face. So endearing. It's like a little monster. Zorua is cute. Oh, wait. <laughs> There we go. Zorua is cute, but its hair poof feels very plopped on. Like, it was an afterthought. Now, if not for its tail hair, I feel like Zoroark would really struggle to sit. But I like all the angles and spikes, and its hair is so extreme. Its makeup is striking. Honestly, I'd say they did a marvelous job with this one. In past generations of sitting cuties, they often struggled to do the more popular mons justice, but they definitely hit the mark on this one. Mincino sits, but something is off about it. I think the head is too tall, the ears aren't wide or to the side enough, the puff is on its mid torso instead of its upper chest and chin. There's no one thing that's super wrong with it, but there's just a lot of little things that all come together to, to give this thing bootleg vibes. Cincino now. That is a tangle of plush tube thingies, if I've ever seen one. It's shaped a lot better than Mincino, though if you look at it from any angle but straight on, it looks kind of jumbly and silly. Uh, it's also, for some reason, one of the biggest sitting cuties. Why him so big? Gothita. Huh. Her head looks like an egg. And it stands up. What a good baby. But too bad these are sitting cuties. And dang, girl, you got scoliosis. The worst kind, too. Baby scoliosis. Gotharito sits well. Very cute. Mine has a few loose blue threads on its eyes, which I'm gonna keep because it makes her look extra sad. And Gothatel sits surprisingly well, despite being so top heavy and being so dress heavy. The tag is up in the skirt too, making it easy to hide. It's very flappy, very fun to shake. Solosis, more like ball, ball, with a butt, double cheeked up on a Friday night. Perfectly throwable. Yeet. And Duosion makes it so much cuter. It's like a proper rocking chair. And I do like how they did this line. There's no real way to get a transparent plush to look good. And having their details pop out like this, while inaccurate, does look a lot better than if they were to just print the faces on, you know? And surprisingly, Reuniclus turned out great too. It's really satisfying to just twiddle about and play with. There's lots of weight in those arms. Perfect for just swinging and twirling. Now, I don't even like Ducklet, but it just wins. It wins here. It's so especially cute. And the soft down. It's all down. We've reached a peak. It's all downhill from here. Except actually, no. Swana also sits well and has the sass, like all swans do. Just want to snap in a Z formation and wobble the head. Uh huh. If I try hard enough, I can get Vanillite to sit. 
It only took me as long as it takes for ice cream to melt, though. But there is no sitting with vanillish. But hey, it's it's cute. Ish? Oh no, it's worse. It's a vanilla X now. Honestly, it's because of the straw. It's always the straw wafer thing that pushes it over the line into bad territory. It doesn't sit, but honestly, it not sitting gives it more points because you don't have to see its face as much. Deerling? More like clearling in the forest because it's a deer. But yeah, they really did invent all four forms of deerling, even though the only real difference is the color. Though, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but I do appreciate that all of the deerling here have different ear poses to help differentiate them from each other. Gives them some personality. And now the four saws bucks. I like spring saws buck from afar, but then you get close and eh, pass. I do like the attempt at the illusionary 3D of the antlers with the sticker here, at least. Now summer. Wait, if they did the branch antlers in 3D here, why not on the spring one? The heck? Well, it's still very cute, and I like how they did the bushes with bumps and stitched on felt leaves. It gives it dimension and personality, which can also be said of the autumn saws buck. It too is very cute, and did you notice that the different seasons also have different chest, tail, and ankle fur? It's especially noticeable when we jump to winter. But it is the spring problem again, but somehow worse. The antlers. I'll go. Like Emolga! Oh no! The bad kind of oh no! It feels wrong! The ears aren't right, it leans, its head isn't spherical, it's blobular. Himolga, more like amoeba, cause it's shaped wrong. Oh jeez, it's supposed to be the super cute Pikachu clone, but instead it's the kinda ugly Pikachu leave me alone. Oh no, but the good kind of oh no this time. Carablast, it's adorable, but it just won't sit. You'd have to lean it on something, but it still belongs in every collection. It is too cute. And a scavalier looks pretty cool, but will definitely not sit. And its lances seem far too small, poor guy. But I really like the use of whatever material they used for the blue of its body. It's like the nylon they used to make sports stuff. The use of a completely different style of material here makes it more obvious that it doesn't belong. So true story, when a bunch of these plushies arrived in the mail, I dumped the box on the table to start opening them all, and I eventually saw this and said, oh gosh, did I accidentally order another Pokeball plush? I really don't need another. Oh, okay, it's just Fungus. Whew. So yeah, Fungus does its job well, and I enjoy the floppiness. Meanwhile, they dropped the ball on Amoongus. Like the arms are so stubby and the head is too small and the arms are too small and like this is supposed to be a large meta mushroom monster. The proportions are all wrong and not in a to chibiify and make it cuter kind of way, but in an abominable kind of way. But frillish. Not really frill or ish. Impressive that they can sit upright being jellyfish and all, having no brains or bones, and I feel like they've got the colors spot on. But now this seems more like how jellyfish would sit. They are blobs or burgers. The male one's eyes kind of freak me out, though. Oh, that accursed male gaze. And they are oddly firm for being jellyfish plushies. Hello, Momola. There is no sitting with hello, Momola. Thankfully, though, it's the same in all directions, which is the point. It's too stiff for its own good, too. Joltik? Whoa, life size. Wait. Hang on. OK, checks out. Life size. And look at that booty. It's just bodacious. And its little face a woo. I need more of these. Galvantula's cute too, but do you hear those concrete slappers? Oh yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, the noise. Mmm. Yeah, I spent real money on a pharaoh seed plush. What am I doing with my life again? At least I could use it as a dryer ball. Now pharaoh thorns got those dreads. Very flippy and extremely fun to do this with. Ho 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 ho. Whoa! This is now the most fun plushie to play with that I own. I never want to stop. And same with Clink. I love how you can tell that they just made a bunch of these single gears and then stitched them together with just two stitches. It's great. And it makes it super fun to just flippity flop with. Perfect for fidgeters. But Clang, unfortunately, isn't sized up to use the same Clinks as before. That'd be hilarious, honestly. But uh, no, it's a smaller Clink gear. But Kling Kling, yeah, that is just Kling, but with more stuff added on. It's a bunch of gears. 
what more can I say? Now, if not for the tag, you could not figure out which side is the top or bottom of Tynamo. There's no like beans or anything to say this is the butt. But either way, that doesn't matter much because it will never sit. You really could cut it in half lengthwise and it'd be the same plush. Now, honestly, I feel like there's no chance I'll ever be able to get this electric to sit. <gasps> I got it. You're seeing greatness here, folks. Funnily enough though, if you cut this tag off, you would not be able to get it to sit. It is a load bearing tag. And I like how electric is shaped like an S for Servine. Servine! Electros is much easier to make. Uh, but the real bonus points are how fun it is to flap its arms. They're big and heavy, except at the shoulder. So they just wanna woo, woo, woo. LGM also manages to sit perfectly despite its big head. And it's cute. Another win for Alien Kind. The design comes out very well. An excellent silhouette. And BEM T poses for dominance. It really dominates at sitting. Though infuriatingly, the forehead detailing is off center. Oh, that's maddening. But I appreciate it nonetheless. Is this Litwick more puffy haired emo to you? It's more emo to me. The upper wax hair is just so extra. It's like it's trying to make a scene. It kind of ruins it for me. Lampent is very fun to twirl by its arms, but no matter how much you do that, it will not sit. In order to achieve Lampent sitting, you must first invert its cool hat, and then invert its cute body. And then it looks stupid, so don't do that. And Chandelure kind of sits. Or is it just luring me into thinking it does? Well, I like it. It's a really good plush. I appreciate the design. It's a chandelier. It's not supposed to sit. It's supposed to hang on some fishing line. Make it a lure. Maybe you can catch all them tricky chandels. Axio is pretty adorbs, and I want to befriend it. And we'll just watch it spin here in the white void gracefully. Now, I'm not a big fan of the scabs on Fracture. Like, I know that it has those, but it just looks worse here. I also don't like how its lower lips are like it's trying to eat hot soup. Uh, but the dainty little claws, it's got those. At least Haxorus's blades aren't droopy. A little eccentric, but not too bad. It just needs braces for a few years, or to not be shipped in a very tight plastic bag while being crushed among dozens of other plushes. <laughs> hmm. Yes! Drillbur was worth every second of waiting! Oh my word, those eyes! Oh, the face! Also, one plush is not enough to get free shipping from Pokemon Center, so, uh... I now own this butter dish. Whoa! Cub Chew's Snot Bobble is bobble-tastic. I would bobble the bobble whenever I need to bobble bobbles. Bear tick? Dang, girl! All natural 70s style? Someone get this bear a manscaped stat. Man, it even feels wrong. It's soft, but like mildly sticky and tangled soft. Not a pleasant soft. It wants to eat and absorb every piece of lint and dust in the vicinity. But uh, other than that though, uh, yeah, it's a sitting bear tick. Cryogonal won't sit, but I do really appreciate how dang shiny it is. Using such a shiny material is very fitting for such a reflective and shiny ice elemental. And I'm glad they didn't include its melty dangly bobs because that would have detracted from its appeal, whatever appeal a cryogonal has anyway. Shelmet says, stop right there, criminal scum. I'm gonna smooch ya. And you can hold it like a gun. Pew pew pew, smooch smooch. A Selgor wants to be painted like one of your French girls. It makes sense with those lips, those snaily snaily lips. And in game they look cool, but in plush form, the scarf bits just kinda get in the way. I mean, it is a perfect Stunfisk plush. Uh, that means it doesn't really sit. Or does it? Is this sitting for a flatfish? Well, uh, Stunfisk gets an A plus for being the Stunfiskiest Stunfisk. Mine Foo is like a little baby toddler that wants uppies. It is kind of cute, but I, I don't think they got its pose across. It's supposed to be doing this Tai Chi Kung Fu pose. Not the Zhang Shi thing. It's also doing mad splits. Does that count as sits? Mine Shao. I like how they included the paws underneath the flaps. This is the detail I crave. It appears a little too sultry though. What's with those bedroom eyes? At least it sits dang near perfectly, despite its arms being two thirds of its weight. Dredagon, no lie. As soon as I grabbed this out of its package, I said ow. But at least it hurting is thematically appropriate, what with it being a thistle dragon and all. It's also oddly cute, despite its teeth and thorns being kinda all over the place. It's like, it's like old grandpa kind of cute. Golit? Oh, this guy's just ready to go. Looks like a 3D platformer hero. Wahoo! I do love how this looks. Holding it is another.
another story though. Those straps are super stiff and solid, as are the plates on its wrists and legs. Like, it's among the hardest plush parts so far. And go lurk! More like go lurk around the gym and work those legs out. Mine actually has no stuffing in the legs, it's just a fabric tube. But it looks cute while sitting. The bandage seal looks like it was added after the fact, which is a bonus, but the scar itself is weak in texture, as it is just printed on. Now this looks like the poniard that got kicked out of the family for not being straight enough. And yet, look at those eyes. Those are the eyes of someone on the brink. Someone who knows that they'll use their knife hands for violence one day, even if they'll miss most of the time. Oh no, Bisharp, what's wrong? Everything you say? Okay, well you can't be that bad because you sit and you're sharp, even if the blades are all bent out of shape. Uh, there has to be some way of getting these to stay straight. Maybe electricity. Boofalance boof is very boof. It boofs a lot. Its boof is very fun to pet. Very soft and wool-like. Its horn rings on the other hand. Youch! Ribbed for her torture. It even has a little sad face to reflect the pain it causes, but that kind of makes it cuter in a sad kind of way. Is Rufflet's feather supposed to be that crooked? Was this rufflet roofied? It's bedhead incarnate. Two left feet. The material of its head is perfect, looks wise, but is also so very icky to touch. Ah, Braviary has finally got its feathers on straight. Mine is missing the end of one of its toes, though. Lost it in the war! It sits really good for being a bird, though, and I do appreciate its wing posing. Fullaby! What? You are significantly cuter here than you are in game. I like the little wave it's doing with its wing. And it sits so good, sitting champion right here with a literal dumpy diaper like that. Mandibuzz also sits well, despite the fun fact that most birds can't actually sit. Oh, I love her eyeliner. It slays. Though I do feel that the wings are way too puffy and thick. Uh, but the bones are fittingly sharp, and well done. Heatmore? Oh my gosh, this dude is so good. The colors, the pattering, the greebling of the body, the snoo! I wasn't a Heatmore stand before, but I definitely am now. The only negative that I can think of is that the front pipe is kind of uncomfortable to stroke. Good night, everybody. Oh, Durant looks angry and very floppy. And I bet you've never seen an ant sit. And you still won't, because this just flops and lays there, angrily sniffing the floor. Dino! I get that this mouth is supposed to be open, like it's letting out a little roar, but to me it just looks like 1920 Art Deco poster flapper lady lips. You know what I mean? Impossible lips, kind of, but like old fat. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Zvilus is better, thanks entirely to the closed mouths. Though I'm sad you can't lift up the flaps to reveal the eyes, like with Pyloswine. It does just kind of stand there and the back cape area is coming detached, but it looks fine. Hydrogen has so many blips and blops, and no sititude. It don't sit, but it can stand at least. Looks like a clown dragon with sock puppets. Fun back tendrils, and you can make the arm mouths kiss. And they're both boys. Whole Arvesta, just the besta. So stiff, give it a whiff. These things are Stiff. It's really cute. Now, I saw on the website that Volcarona was frequently the first one sold out. It is a popular bug, and I feel like they did a pretty okay job here. It doesn't sit unless you lean it against something, but, I mean, mood, right? It's not at all comfortable to hold or touch because of the details and the greebling and the printed fabric, but it does look really good. I especially like the color gradient on the wings. Cobalion turned out surprisingly well. I'm glad they gave the horns shape and depth. And despite all the felt, none of it is sharp, but the beard could be softer. So how are Terrakion's big horns so soft when Cobalions weren't. And like, what is it about this guy? It is really, really fun to just pet. Ooh, it's just not fun to look at. Looks like an old Italian father who's not mad at you, just disappointed. Verizian. Oh, it's not just an ungulate. It's an ugly yit. It must have did something with its eyes. It looks like a three-year-old boy waiting for a cookie at a doctor's office. Ah, uh, the thunderuses. By which I mean the force of nature trio. More like the forces their way into my house help get them out of here trio. But finally, Pokemon is giving us more of what we need plushies of men. I appreciate how soft the clouds are. The outsides, anyway. Inside is filled with beans. And you'd think that having big, soft, yet heavy cloud bases would mean that they're easily sittable, but alas, was not to be. These guys are way too front and side heavy. It is possible to get them to sit, but oh, not easily. Their arm crossing could use some work, as right now they look like a grumpy, inexperienced boy band. Like a boy band made of grumpy old men. We're the forces of nature! And then we get to the Therian forms. Tornadus? Yeah, it's a very very angry man bird with a very angry man cloaca. 
thunderous is so big. I think this is the biggest sitting cutie by far, mostly due to the tail, which hurts a lot to be whipped with, but I do really like its big soft paws and its little detailed feet. And then Landorus, kitty, such a good dog. The tail does sit nicely on its head, until it doesn't. It is kind of finicky and very heavy, so it falls with a wallop. Now, despite Reshiram's white pride being stained a brownish tinge, the blue eyes white dragon is sharp and rigid in its views and feels. At least it's got a big butt to sit on and nothing to do with. Zekrom's is big too, and sharp. I love that the actual hands under the knot hands are just an embroidered patch. It's funny. Big uncomfortable tail. Very cool. Q-Rem? Oh, the stubbies. Oh, the huge mustache. Why is its tail so small? And why is it so small compared to all the other legendaries? It just looks silly. If you showed this to someone who had never seen Kyurem before, they'd think Kyurem's stupid. I guess that's the same if you show Kyurem to someone who does know what Kyurem is, but still. And white Kyurem is an even more jumbled up mess. But at least it doesn't look... Okay, no, it is still just a wee busy. Black Kyurem, though. What a grump. It's got huge mutton chops, but at least it still somehow manages to be cute despite being what it is. Ah, Keldeo ordinary form. More like I want to kill the self ordinarily. Why'd we give this thing two forms? Well, here's Keldeo bad dragon form. You versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. I appreciate the difference in the expression between the two though, but regular form smile is just too dorky, like hilariously so. Uh, but look, they're dueling. Meloetta's aria form has good blush and nice dress flowing. I like the hair details, and while they give it a bigger butt to sit properly, all it's really doing is making me uncomfortable as I can see its butt hanging out of its skirt from the front. Oh, and the note thing on its head looks like a weird mosquito. I think I prefer its pirouette form. It's the bacon hair. It's like a bacon wrapped habanero. I really do like how wrapped it is. How they made a long strip of fabric and then wrapped it around the head instead of just making some solid piece and painting it as if it looked like that. Very nice. But oh, does it struggle to sit? And now, lastly, Genesect sits and is cute too. Oh, the floppy drive on top is very stiff, so it is very fitting. Oh god, could you imagine if they did every form of Genesect? It's such a minor difference. But yeah, I love how floppy the arms are. This thing is just cute and you, it can rest anywhere. I do wish the cannon wasn't attached to the head because then doing this would be a lot more fun. So now, brief total review. This time around, I feel like the fabric variety is strong and the amount of detailing they managed to add is impressive. Though, a negative spawns from that too. I feel like these sitting cuties are bigger than the average so far when comparing them to the previous generations. Not by much, but it is still noticeable, and that is probably just to help them add all of those extra details. Hopefully in the next gen or two that will balance out. Gen 5 is often criticized for how overdesigned and overly detailed the Pokemon are, so I guess this is to be expected. Overall though, very strong gem. Maybe even my favorite. And I look forward to Gen 6's sitting cuties. Maybe I won't be banned that time because there's only like 70 of them. Oh no, are they going to do every Vivillion? Am I going to be overwhelmed by butterflies?